Hey guys, welcome back to Nexus Core. I'm Richard, and today I'm going to be showing you my Gold Paladin Unite deck. So, starting off, we're going to have our starter, which is Knight of Early Dawn Coel. Coel's skill is Act GB1 Unite. Uh, so, Unite is the keyword where two things are called to Rear Guard or Guardian Circle during the turn. So, his skill is Unite. Uh, you can move him to the Soul during the main phase, and look at the top three cards of your deck, search for one. Call it to rear, it gets plus 2k, and the rest go back to your deck and you shuffle. So, really helpful with filling the field. Combos off great with uh, Abracus and other uh, Gold Paladin G units. So, really good starter for Gold Paladin. Now, I'm going to go on to my grade 3s. We're going to start off with the main, which is Sunrise, Ray Knight, Gurget. Uh, Gurget's skill is GB2, Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 1. You can look at the top four cards of your deck, uh, search for one among it, and call it to the Guardian Circle and put the rest back in your deck and shuffle. So, really good if you want a superior perfect guard. I don't find myself doing the superior perfect guard that often, but I do find myself needing another 10k shield, so I'll use Gurgit's skill for that. And his stride skill is Counter Blast 1. When a G unit is placed on top of him, you pay the cost. You can look at the top four cards of your deck, Search along among it, call it, and it gets plus 2k, and the rest go back in your deck and you shovel. So, this is the main of the deck, Gurgit, right here. So, for his backup, I decided to run four copies of Dongle. So, the reason I'm running Dongle over other options like Ezreal Scissors is because I want to do a Unite specific deck. So, uh, and I really like his skill because you can just call him anywhere and he works great. So, his Unite skill is GB1. Uh, if he's on a rear guard circle, he gains intercept, and when he intercepts, he gets plus 5 shield. So if you call two things to the guard circle, now he can intercept as well, which is really nice and has been really helpful a lot of times for me. And his other skill, which is the best part, is when he's placed on rear, just either from hand or from deck, he gains boost. So if you call him out with Paramore, or if you just want to call him for an extra 10k boost behind Bowler Goal or anything like that, this is a really great card. So... I really like it a lot. So we're going to go on to the grade twos. I'm running three copies of Knight of Springs Light Paramore. Paramore is basically the pseudo Aglavel from Liberators. His first skill is Unite. He gets plus 2k uh, during the turn when you're in Unite. And his other skill is when he's placed on GB1, when he's placed on rear, Counter Blast 1, look at the top three cards of your deck, and call from the top three from that top three to the same column that he's in. So, pseudo Aglavel, but he's really helpful because you can call it from hand, you can basically get instant unite. And he just helps fill out the field when you just chain calling units from the deck. So this card is basically the card that sets, that helps set up unite fields for either Scourge Point or for Gurgit. So, running that at three. I wanted to run at four, but I had some complications with my mail. So, uh, because a friend of mine was sending it to me in the mail and I didn't get it. So I'm just showing you guys the, my deck with just the three copies. Next up for my grade twos, I'm running four copies of Bowler Goal. Bowler Goal is great because he essentially gives himself uh, a trigger power. By that I mean um, he gets another 5k on his own. So his skill is Unite. When he attacks the Vanguard, he gains 5,000 power when he attacks, which is just really good because it's just 5k. So, and if he gets plus two from Gurgit's skill or from uh, Coel, that, that'll make him hit for 16. You know, you give him that plus five from Gurgit G unit that's, you know, hitting for 19 on its own. It's just a really, really good grade two. The reason I'm maxing it out at four is because it, a lot of people tend to pick it off or attack it or try and retire it. So, I want to max it out so I can see it more often. It can really push for big numbers and win, win games. Next up, I'm running three copies of Knight of the Faint Sun, Marsha. Marsha, I'm running because I like the Soul Charging Engine and also like the Unflips. Also, what I like over her, her over Saphir is that you can place her from hand and still get the skill off. Uh, one thing that's not too amazing but has been really helpful is one time I was playing against a Kagura deck and the fact that she has the Resist ability was helping out a lot because... Uh, my opponent could not use Denial Griffin to retire her to prevent the attack from going through. 
So let me just explain her skill. Her skill is Unite, non-GB1, so there's no GB1 in her, any of her skills is. So it's Unite, at the end of either player's turn, you can move her to the soul and you just unflip. And then she also has Continuous Resist. So I run it at three, because I really want to fill up my soul really well. And because we have units that, you know, like Gurgit give plus two, Ko gives plus two, so it can be 10k on its own. Boosters can have an extra 2k. Uh, you can put Dongle behind it, hits for 18k. It's still, it can still work really well. So I'm running it at three. And lastly, for my grade twos, I'm running Holy Mage Puil. The only thing about Puil that I don't really like most of the time is I don't use it that often because Quill is for battle phase superior calling and this deck is mostly doing main phase superior calling. So I still run it because it combos great with Scourge Point and maybe if I want to do an extra attack with the unit, it's there for multiple attacks to wear out my opponent's hand. Mm. The only other thing I could say is I might what I might do is I would might take one out for an extra Paramore so I can have more main phase superior calling. But I'm liking it at the two because I don't see it that often to where it kind of uh, messes with the synergy of the deck and I see it enough where if I do want to call it maybe and do some scourge point plays I can still use it so I'm doing it at two. Next for our grade ones I'm running four copies of Sunshine Knight Sunshine Knight Jeffrey kind of stuck together there so Sunshine Knight Jeffrey's skill is Unite GB1. At the end of the battle that it boosts, you can move it to the soul and draw a card. So it's a soul engine and a draw engine, which is really amazing. So I'm maxing out four, because it's my ride target for grade ones. And if I'm playing against control decks and I want to draw early game so I can fill up hand, uh, that's the, the go-to for me. So I'm really liking this card a lot, so I'm maxing it out of four. Next up for our grade ones, I'm running four copies of Dawning Knight Gorbaduck, which is the stride fodder. And so it's placed on rear, reveal a grade three in your hand, search for Gurgit at the hand, then you discard one, and then the other skill is it counts as a grade three for stride cost. So typical stride fodder. Next I'm running four copies of Holy Mage Candice, like a lot of you suggested. Um, I'm kind of iffy about this one. One is I like it a lot because I can do the superior perfect guard with Gurgit and Slay Me Flare and it's nice. And I don't have to worry too much about unflipping my damage because I have a lot of unflip uh, stuff that unflips my damage for me like the stand trigger, Jerry, and uh, Marsha. The only thing about this is a lot of my games I tend to see it in my hand more than reveal it in my deck. So I kind of feel like if I were running the other PG, you know, I basically would be kind of getting a bonus because I'm calling it from hand anyways. So, but I still like the being able to access this in case I run into glory skills like, or guard restrict skills like uh, Phantom Blaster Diablo and Novell Express. So I'm still liking the ability to access this. It's nice. And lastly for my grade ones, I'm running just one copy of Knife Throwing Knight Malagant. So this helps out with the unflip engine the soul's really big, so the soul blast 2 doesn't really matter that much. And what I like to do is when I'm running it at 1, I like to call it, do its skill, and then maybe if I need to guard Slimy Flare, I can put it back in the deck. And then maybe I'll see it later and unflip again. So I didn't need to mac I didn't need to run two. I felt like I could just run one and I could still essentially get off the one time unflip two that I needed. So I'm liking it at one. It's a really good tech. Let's move on to our triggers. I am running four copies of Scarface Lion, which is the Heart Thumb clone for Gurgit. So it's when a Vanguard attacks with Gurgit in its name, you move this to the soul, the Vanguard gets plus five and you get to draw a card. And then after that, I am running four copies of Flame of Victory, which is the Marco clone. It's uh, during main phase, you can move it to the soul and you can choose another one of your units and give it plus 3000 power. Next up, I'm running four copies of Player of the Holy Pipe, uh, Jerry. The reason I'm liking this a lot, and it was really tough because it was hard to give up Gigantic Ringer because Gigantic just helped so much with power plays. But I'm really liking Jerry because the unflipping and the filling up the soul, since this deck really needs that, 
I just wanted to max it out completely. It's just really, really, really helpful. And, you know, since we're doing a lot of uh, power uh, rear guard columns, having the stand triggers is really helpful as well with that. And lastly, running four copies of Curable Angel. No, I am not running Napco Liberator Atlas because I don't want to. So I'm running Curable Angel from the Gold Paladin Start deck. Next up, we're gonna go into our G units. I'm just gonna get Sea Breeze out of the way. So I'm just so, let's just explain it. So Sea Breeze, uh, Cannon Blast 2 is the cost. And if your opponent's at grade two and they haven't ridden the previous turn, you can discard one Cannon Blast 2 and you can just stride, uh, perform stride onto your grade three and essentially get GB1 off. So one Sea Breeze. And I'm gonna go right into Golden Knight of Incandescence, Abracus. So Abracus skill is when he's placed on the Vanguard circle, you counter blast one and you soul blast one, and you get to look at the top two cards of your deck, pick one, call it to rear, and put the other one on the bottom of your deck. So calming this off with Gurgit Stride skill gives you instant unite. You can use it. It's basically the, the card you'd ideally want to use for your first stride, kind of like Dio in the anime. So really good card, only one copy of it. Next time, I'm gonna go right into Gurgit. I'm running two copies of Sunrise Ray Radiant Sword Gurgit. I am running two, and ideally I would, you would want to run three before uh, GBT08 drops. The reason I'm running two is because uh, I'm trying to budget and save up because I'm only gonna be running two copies of this probably in my set eight build. So I'm just running two copies for now. So Gurgit's skill is act, GB2, unite, uh, you counter blast one, soul blast two. All your rear guards get plus five thousand power, and he gets plus five for each rear guard you have. So it's basically platinum as old, but better. And the skill stacks, so you can keep doing it. You can counter blast two and soul blast four, give everything ten k, give him fifty k if you have five rear guards or whatever. How many, depending on how many rear guards you have. So it's a really good finisher. I run two because. If they survive the first one, you can use the second one. They might still live, but their hand's gonna be pretty run dry. So yeah, two copies of Gurgit. Next up, I am running two copies of Golden Dragon, Spirit Cross Dragon. I like Spirit Cross because I like to use him um, early game to fill up field. Uh, he's the panic button too if my field disappears. Uh, because of G Guardian, Scourge Point's just amazing now because you can just Generation Guard, and now you can call units based on a number of cards face up in the G zone. So, Spirit Cross is great for now, and I just really like having it there. It's just my panic button. Next, I'm running two copies of Golden Dragon Scourge Point Dragon. Uh, you all remember Scourge Point from other deck profiles. He's really, really, really good. Uh, not as amazing now because Pwill got knocked down to two. Uh, before Scourge Point and Poil was kind of like my combo, but he still works really well with Paramore and Poil and Coel. So things just getting plus five pushes. You can if you want to rush with your first stride, you can use this because uh, everything that gets called from the deck, he gets plus five, and then the unit that's called gets plus five as well. So really good. I'm running two, so I can use it multiple times if I want to. And I'm just going to go into some text. I'm running one copy of Fast Chase Golden Knight Campbell. Uh, don't see him that often, but I just like it if I don't have any counter blast and I just want to put some pressure on my opponent so they don't want to let this hit, or I can get an extra call if it does hit. So one copy of that. I'm running one copy of Golden Dragon Rising Shine Dragon. This card's really great. It's basically Campbell, but better. Uh, his skill is uh, when he's when his attack hits the vanguard, you can counter blast one and choose a face down G unit and flip it face up. And you get to look at the top three cards of your deck, uh, choose two among them, call them to rear guard circles, and then put the third one in the bottom of your deck. So it's really great because your opponent doesn't want you to uh, call two things, especially if it's your first stride. So it puts a lot of pressure on your opponent, and I think it's really great. And also since it uh, flips up any any face down G unit. Typically, your target's going to be Sea Breeze, since uh, if you're striding normally and you didn't need to use Sea Breeze, you can just flip this face up. So I'm really liking it at the one. It's really good as first stride and some mid game pressure. 
And lastly, this is probably the thing that I would run a third Gurgit over, but because I want to keep it at two, I'm going to be running, as my final G unit is going to be Golden Dragon Ray Breath Dragon. So it's the generic G unit from the start deck for Gold Paladin. His skill is Unite, he gets plus 5,000, and the rear guards in the front row get plus 2k. He's all right. There have been times where I go, oh, I should stride Ray Breath right now. It'd be really fun. If I have like two Buller Goals, or if I have Dongle, and Dongle's just sitting at 10k by himself and he doesn't have a booster, you stride this, and all of a sudden Dongle's a 12k attacker. So he, he helps at times when you don't want to like use too many resources like Counter Blast and Soul Blast, and you just want to poke your opponent for numbers. So yeah, he's there. I like I like having him for now, and I'm probably going to be getting rid of him as soon as set 8 drops, so one of these. And now, G Guardians. It's running two copies of Sacred Heaven Prayer Master Rhea. Uh, her skill is when, he's play when she's placed in the Guardian Circle, if you have two rear guards, she gets plus 5,000 shield, so really easy and generic for a gold paladin. And then I'm going to be running two copies of Golden Beast Slamy Flare. Slamming Flare skill is really great, especially uh, helping against the deck out. So his skill is, when he's placed in the Guardian Sickle, I can choose one of my rear guards, put it in the bottom of my deck, and if I do, I look at the top five cards, and I can choose two among them if they're different grades, and call them a Guardian Circle. So he can essentially become a maximum of a, of a, of a he can get a maximum of 30,000 shield by himself, and it's just really great against really big numbers. And also you can put units back into your deck. Like if you have Dongle in the back row and it's already done boosting for the turn, you can return it back to your deck and essentially get Dongle back again later. And finally, since I'm actually running five G Guardians, I'm running one copy of Metal Element Screw. Screw's skill is when he's placed in the Guardian Circle, if I have a face up G unit, my G zone, I can discard one and he gets another plus 10,000 shield. So why am I running five G Guardians? So my main thing is these are my, my main four that I'm probably gonna be using during the game. Cause you can only, you can only, you know, G guard four times a game during your, so uh, reason I'm running five is let's say, uh, well, the main thing is because these guys require rear guards for the skills to work. This needs two rear guards in your field to get the plus five and this needs at least one rear guard to even activate its own, you know, its own skill. So if you're playing against control decks and your field is basically gone, you can't really use these guys' skill. But this one, since doesn't require field, you can just pull this out, discard one, and then you have a 36k uh, defense, counting your Vanguard's 11k. So that's, that's why I want to run this. So it's like, oh, you know... If I do two of these, one slamy flare, and it's like, oh, you know, I have no rear guards, and this thing's hitting for 26. Oh, call this two to pass, you know. So I'm liking it. I like it at five because I don't tend to stride all of my G units, every single G unit in my deck, by through an, through an entire game. So I'm really liking this G Guardian loadout. So that's pretty much my deck profile. Uh, I hope you guys like it. Uh, if you have any suggestions or any concerns, you can leave it in the comments section below. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.